These are darts that are used in a little bit more decorative way. We've got tuck darts, regular darts, and pleats. In this case, they're only folded together and stitched on the end, and right here just opens up. These are sewn closed like a dart, and these are sewn part way up and then released before they get to the end. Any of these could also be turned into gathers. So part of this chapter right here is they're showing that they're just leaving this right here but that doesn't mean that's what you're supposed to do this is just their way of saying you get to choose how this is finished so you still have to finish off the seam allowance so that it's that same fourth of an inch but depending on how you're planning to sew it the way I just drew that would be as if it were gathered if you were doing tucks or darts, you would fold it and cut it while they were folded or use your little pointy wheel and mark it, but they would each have their little point that comes down if you were doing it that way. So this just means you get to choose how it's finished. Here's the example over here. Of so you've got the two different ways. All three of these will be finished by folding it and cutting it. And the extra way over here that I just drew a straight line is for gathers and that's the only one that works that way. But you still need to finish it and trim that off. Even though this whole chapter in the book has these little outlines, so don't get confused by that. Okay, so we're going to do a simple one, just to talk about how to move those darts around, and then we'll move on to some more fun ones. Alright, instead of pivoting this one, it's going to be just the way we've got it here. So I'm just going to trace it on the page. That's my little dog. The reason this works just exactly the way it is, is because the darts are staying pretty much in the same place that they are. If you're looking at the one in the book, it shows where to draw the lines. It says to come an inch down, so we'll come down a half an inch. And it says to come over one inch, so we'll come out a half an inch. So I'm just using my ruler and measuring to the side parallel to the dart a half an inch on each side but as long as I stay within this circle I mean I could come out a little bit as long as I was staying even on both sides and then I'm going to come an inch a half an inch below the bust point and make a mark 
on each side. And this is the way they've got the picture drawn in the book. I'll zoom into that. I mean, you can see it in the book, but I drew a parallel line out here that's a half an inch tall, and I measured down the dart a half an inch where those two lines intersect. I connected them with the line, so parallel a half an inch out to the side, then come down a half an inch and over and connect that. So we're going to slash up both of those lines. And we have two little furry creatures. I think it's time to go outside. So on both of these, I'm cutting over to the bus point because they still need to radiate from the bus point. And I'm going to go ahead and trim this section out. So I'm going to have three spaces. So I'm really just dividing that one original dart that was this size into three, except I think I would sew them together as tucks. So instead of stitching them all the way to the top, I'm just going to fold them over and press them and stitch them along here and just leave them open. So. Behind that, I would just fill in another piece of paper and glue them down and blend it. So that could be, if I blend it, it would be gathers. If I fold it when I'm through, it would be tucks. I started by gluing a piece in behind, so I put the glue on the outer edge. And now these two can move freely and I'm just spreading them out evenly. If you want to do the math, then you're going to need to have three even spaces divided by two and a half inches. Two and a half divided by three three quarters plus a sixteenth. We'll see if that actually works. usually do the math when I'm looking at the ruler, but I double check it. Alright, so I'll just glue it down like that. it from the center out because if you go the opposite direction it doesn't always lay flat and I used my little guide marks that I put there all right so if I was just going to gather this then I would draw I would blend a line across there and go ahead and just kind of have a little curved line that looked like that. And then I'd add seam allowance to it, and that would be for gathers.
but since I'm going to put in tucks, I'm going to make it so that the flap goes inside on all of them. So I'm going to fold that side and bring the other side to it. Before I do that, I'm going to cut off some of this extra so that it's easier. Fold it over, roll it back. Oh, I missed. And I'm going to put my finger there and bring the one side to match the other. And I was using this mark. I can do that. I can also use one halfway between, but I want these two to be further out. So I'm using the outer edge on this one, which means I'm also going to use the outer edge on the outside one, just so that these two end up equally distant from the bust point. So I'm going to draw this line here, and that line, it's weird that I don't have my head right over it like I usually do. So this line is going to fold to this one, and this line is going to fold to that one. So this is our ease. And then this one's just going to fold regularly. And then we'll have to blend that. So we'll try that one more time. And that still turned out the same. But I think it makes more sense while you're watching it now. So we've done plenty of regular darts, so I'm turning this into tucks that are just released. So I don't have to worry about adding ease. I'm just going to fold them all and mash down the centers so they're all open on that outside edge. Folding on the crease line sharply all the way to the point. Lay it down. Push it in and bring the one side to match the other, and then mash down the center. So I've got all of them right there, like that. Well, that looks weird, but because these drop down and I have so much extra ease beyond what I usually have, it's going to be okay. If I take my curve, I need to get a half scale sized curve, and just blend that off because I'm going to go back to my original waistline. This is going to get cut off, but I added a lot up here. So it's going to compensate. So while that's folded, I'm going to go ahead and add my seam allowance. going to put any seam allowance down the center front because this is on the fold. And I'm going to go ahead and erase those two so they're not confusing. And then this pink section just becomes part of the interior of the piece. We're not cutting it out or anything. It's just part of the fabric. I decided I would just start leaving them 
a contrasting color because they're easier for you to see. But please don't get confused by that. We're not cutting them out or anything. And when you sew this together, you'll cut out the outer edge and then you'll press them so that they look like this. And then you'll just sew them on the stitching line so that they lay flat, but they're going to stay open and be decorative. So we're not going to stitch the whole dart. And I prefer to cut it while it's folded. it to be gathers, I would just blend it so that it was a smooth curve. Should I draw that line on there too? This is the way I'm going to finish it. And this is tux. But for gathers, I will put a pink line on for optional gathers. So that's where I would blend it off if it were gathers. where that pink is, which means I would cut that off and trim it too. So that would be the difference between the gathers and the tucks. green line is going to be here and I'm going to mark it to be cut on the fold. Center front fold. So this would just be cut one. I would cut this off and then I need to add seam allowance around the rest of the piece. In a work setting, the reason you don't see the stitching line and the seam allowance line like this is that to save time, you eventually work with pieces called blocks instead of slopers. And they're the exact same thing except a block has seam allowance and a sloper has no seam allowance. And at first that concept can be confusing, so we're not doing it. But eventually, if you're working with patterns that already have seam allowance on them, you don't have to add extra. You just mark where the stitching line goes, and then it's already there. And you can get away with just marking the corner and writing on the piece how much seam allowance there is. So it just really depends on the type of work you're doing. So I would cut that out. Make sure the seam allowance is added. And the faster you go, as long as you are using your stomach muscles, the smoother the lines are.
that was just taking one dart, dividing it into thirds, and spreading it out.